What is up, you guys? I am back with another video. Um, today is Sunday. Uh, first Sunday in October. Currently waiting for my lash set to come so I can get these lashes done. I kind of just gave it a break and um, I don't know, like I just be feeling naked without my lashes. So she's on the way to do my lashes and I got a surprise for her and I didn't let her know what we were doing, but um, I've been seeing lately people have been doing the TMI questions that you wouldn't ask your you're scared to ask your friend and I thought those videos were pretty cool and actually really funny so we're gonna do something like that and um, I didn't let her know so when she gets here I'm going to surprise her I just kind of just told her to um, be semi cute you know what i'm saying because you never want to just be telling not telling nobody nothing and then they come in here looking crazy and then you recording you know so my lips are so dry so we're gonna do that and um get y'all set up Lazy. Now, I want a good camera, which I do have. Okay. I mean, it's Gerald's, but I got it for him. But it's a nice Sony camera. Look. It's like your. Well, it's it's an actual. It's photography. like a photography camera. Yeah, and it's Sony, but Sony has good quality. Okay, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. So I'm gonna glue right back on. So the first question says, "How to deal with getting ghosted?" <laughs> <laughs> for me. Um, I don't know. I don't want to say it because I feel like I'm be toxic a little bit. But I don't know. I feel like when I text someone back, well, when I'm in a situation with someone, mm -hmm. and um, I feel like they're taking way too long to text back, taking at least more than twenty four hours to text back, mm -hmm. or just not texting back at all. I kind of send that long message like, listen, if if I'm if you're not into me or whatever, whatever, like mm -hmm. I don't want to feel like I'm bugging you or blah blah blah. I kind of just make it just straight yeah. to the point. We we just done like yeah yeah I um girl I start posting them songs on social media I do that too fuck a nigga fuck a nigga let me stop <laughs> <laughs> I start posting them songs. so and every time I do I post on the Instagram note you know I I just say whatever or I post a song there and you know, the nigga be people I'm like what why are you being weird like what's yeah. wrong and. That's how I deal with being ghosted, and I shouldn't. Or nine times out of ten, I just I don't even react. Yeah, but I don't. Hurt. I do be hurt, but no, I, just, I do be hurt too. But don't it's don't text back. Don't yeah. text in another couple of days or a week because that's yeah, just that. Yeah, like, you text me when you want to text me. Yeah, I feel like we're at the age where it's kind of just like don't waste my time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're not looking for something, then mm -hmm. just say you're not looking for a relationship, relationship. or. This is something that you just don't want to do. You just want to be friends. Yeah. And and half the, half the time, the niggas don't even know how to be friends. They be wanting you for the, that one little bit of entertainment. And, that's and then that. when you go to text and every day, they want to act dry. And, yep. I'm, 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 not, I'm never on my phone that much. Like, right. bro, you're never on your phone that much. Right. We really about to play this card. I don't know. That shit do be hurting, though. No. Nope. When, yeah, you, when you get goes. Like, Damn, I done gave you my attention. But see... Females and males are very different when it comes to, you know, how they react react to it. Yeah. Like a male be having a whole bunch of recruits. Yeah. And yeah. Phone, so it doesn't matter. We probably just said that one. I'm going to double text you one time. One time only. I don't even be double text. Girl, I'm going to double text you one time. Don't even be double text. And we ain't going to hear hear from each other. And I guess we ain't going to hear from each other. And I'm not going to a nigga first. And I should get better with that. But my thing is, 
if you're thinking about me, text me. Yeah. Don't be like, I'm thinking about her, but I'm going to wait for her to text me yeah, first. Like, yeah, yeah. That's even, childish. Just childish. That's childish. Just go ahead and ghost me. Yeah. Don't do all that. That was the next question. <laughs> Excuse me. How do you know if he's the one? Oh, baby, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I feel like. Every time I think a nigga the one, <laughs> I really don't be no one. But then that just goes to like, when do you know you found true love? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I don't, I guess when you just get that feeling, when everything just feels right. right. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I feel like you never really know someone until you actually live with them. Correct. You know what I'm saying? So you might have thought you found the one, you know, because when you're dating someone, you're y'all are just kind of like meeting up, dating, Definitely. kicking it at the house. But that's totally different when someone moves in yeah, with you, or you yeah. move in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. for me, I guess it, good conversation. I mean, I guess it would be just good conversation and um, common mm -hmm. fucking sense. You gotta have some goddamn mm -hmm. common sense. sense, like, and then that's when I'll probably like, okay, maybe mm -hmm. he might be. The decent. one or something decent or something like that, like mm -hmm. because a lot of guys they don't have they don't have common sense at all, like they don't, mm -mm. they don't, and it's hard Maturity. to even correct. And in this time, the time that we're in, generation, it's so hard to even find the one. Yeah, because niggas is bitches. Correct, and it's just, That's just what is it? it's like the roles have flipped. Females are now males. And males are now female. They're so emotional and dramatic. It's just, hard to find somebody that you're compatible with yep. right now. The dudes don't want to show their emotions. And then half of the time, the dudes are putting up this facade. Mm -hmm. So it's just like they're they're doing whatever you're liking until mm -hmm. they get what they want. And then they'll back down. Yep. So when you think you found the one, you know, their true colors are showing, then you get disappointed. Yep. So it's kind of hard to even know, like, is this person the one? You literally have to be kicking with, with somebody for six, seven months yeah. consistently on the same page to even get a decent friendship. Yeah. That's how I feel at, at this time right now. I feel like women now, we're like, our peace of mind is better than dealing with, dealing with the, the guys and the drama and, and the toxicness and Correct. all of this. It's just, mm -hmm. Correct. So, but if you did find the one, shout out to y'all. If you found Shout the out one, to y'all. Uh, everybody everybody who did found the one. Y'all been rocking for 10 plus since high school. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like now, it, even in today's where we're fighting with social media, it's like some yep. type of battle with social yep. media. This, this facade that you people get on this app and they see this guy with this girl, this girl with this guy. They want this. Then they take a um, sit back and think about their relationship and they start comparing and contrasting. It's just like what they have is not going to be what you have and yeah. we don't even know what the fuck they going through, through. you know what i'm exactly. saying like that this is just exactly. five seconds of their life we just seen like exactly we don't even know what the fuck they going through exactly so i mean for me good conversation and common sense like in respect in respect you know what i'm saying i don't want to be with no disrespectful ass nigga like mm, mm. and i'm mm. not even being mm. a uh verbal disrespect yeah as mm -mm. we're just talking about yep. you can't respect me emotionally spiritually Yep. We know physically you're going to have to yep. respect, but not even just verbally. Like, if you just can't respect what I'm dishing out to you or just my wishes and stuff, we don't want it. Yep. Mm -mm. We don't want it. So, it's kind of hard to find that right now. So, I honestly don't know if I ever will find the one. I have my standards. I have what I fantasize about. But, you know, I guess I ain't going to know until I'm like 45. And that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. And it's definitely not gonna be in the club for me. I'm no. gonna just tell you that right now. He might yeah. not be in there. He might not be in there. He gonna be. He need to be in some uh, business office on the right. top floor. Right. So. Barnes and Noble. <laughs> <laughs> that's where I wanna be not going. Barnes and Noble. What is not acceptable on the first date? Um. What is not acceptable on the first date? Kiss. Do not just jump in. And just be kissing, like mm -hmm. we got catch vibes first. I then you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I not, not no kiss. You done invited me to the date and and don't be giving shots that we gonna take it back to the crib and do anything. Like I don't like pushy pushiness. Like let this shit. Definitely if we out to eat. Well, not until we out to eat because I'm not about to just be pulling up at your crib. So nine out of ten we went out to eat and <laughs> girl I keep having to stop and shake my head back here because you was hitting the money. Like don't be thinking like oh maybe we should take it back to the crib and 
we're not gonna take anything back to the crib. No, this is the first date, you yeah. know. Yeah, or the first the first time y'all meet, it got yeah. to be at the crib. It got to be in the car. What? Yes. Oh, baby, we done with the car. Girl, the car. I stopped the car hot boxing and all of that yeah. in high school. I'm done with the car thing. Girl, we they'll pull up in and got them truck and mm -hmm. car and, and then sit, recline back in the in the seat and be like, we chilling here. Like, <laughs> we doing what? I thought it was going to to some type of business <laughs> establishment. Establishment. I'm like We're sitting in your damn Nissan. Yeah. Mm -mm. Oh my god. I don't like the pushy, the pushy, pushy stuff. I don't. I just like it to naturally, naturally be. You know. I don't know. It's just so hard to find. And let me not say because it is some good men out there. Maybe I'm just looking in the wrong city. Yeah. We, Long story we short. Paid, though, so. Correct. <laughs> Long story short, it's just gentlemen. Yeah. It's hard to find gentlemen that's going to ask you out on the first day, open the door up for you, you know, pay for your meal because everybody want to go 50-50 now or everybody want to, um, mm -hmm. no, don't nobody want to just look out for one another. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't mind going 50-50, but if I invite you on a date, I'm paying for it. If you mm -hmm. invite me on a date, you're paying for it. Just the gentleman ways. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Um... Mm -mm. The kissing on the first date, no. The not paying for nothing, no. Mm -mm. Especially when you're the one that offer. I just so stuck in the fifties, maybe because the gentleman back then was decent. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. Maybe actually. just my mental is just different on it, but I'm not looking for you to pay my bills or nothing like that. But again, the way I view dates is if it's being offered, you're being the one to spot it. You're being a gentleman. You're opening up the car door and vice versa. I'm not opening up no damn car door. But <laughs> if I offer you on a date or whatever, I'm going to look out for you because this is something that I wanted to do. And I want to get to know you and I want you to feel comfortable. This is a space I invited you to. So let me, I don't know, just a hospitality. Yeah. I'm yeah. real big on hospitality. So I feel like on a first date. Don't tell me to put my motherfucking debit card. <laughs> Could you imagine? Honestly, like... Um, if you I gonna was, pay for your meal or what? Like, can't if, do it. If I was on the first day and they were like, well, I thought, you know, I, 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 I forgot my... I got, I'm going to get up and say, and say I need to go to the restroom. And but I'm I guess we down in a dashing today. I'm going to leave and leave your ass right here because there's just no motherfucking way. Like, no, you we, left what? We down in Your the whole dashing. wallet. Not the whole wallet. So we driving with no license either. Like... <laughs> We risking it all on the first date. Oh like, my god. Precious are everything to yep. me. So you better come hard. Yep. Well put together and yeah. all. Yeah. You better come hard. I ain't telling you to be the president of the United States type mess, but come as a gentleman should. Yeah. You know, come how you would like to be treated, per se. But the next question is what are some must ask questions on a first date? Where are you from? How many kids you got? Do you have kids? <laughs> do you have your own place? Yes. Uh, do you own a car? Right. Please. And yeah, do you have your own place? And you don't have to say it like that, but yeah. it's just, so where do you stay at? And how long have you been out here? Where are you from? And is that your car there? It's a very nice car. Like, it's yeah. ways to say it without being so direct and, you know, aggressive with it. But I just, I, I just... It bothers me when I hear girls, they say they went on a date or they dated this guy for several months. And they're like, well, I didn't know he had kids. And mm. how do you, you don't know, you didn't how know you, he had kids. Right. How long y'all been talking? Like, And even if old dude don't even bring the kids up, like, it, you sh it should be brought up. Because everybody's not comfortable with that. Yep. Everybody's not comfortable with that. I think, though, that's, that's the most important. Because, um, you know... For me, on my first day, I'm going to talk. I'm going to bring up my kids. Yeah, yeah, you may not see them. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But I'm going to let you know. Like, look, I have two girls. You going to accept that or you not? Already offered. You know what I'm saying? Like, because everybody is not comfortable. I already offer up as soon as somebody. Asked, I have twin girls. How do you forget to tell you got kids? Just let you know. I, I have twin girls. Yep. I come as a package deal. It's not just me. Yep. And I'm not looking for no immature If you're not ready to deal with that, then I'm not the one for you. But yep. it's going to always be me and my girls. That's it. I'm asking that. Oh, Hell, I'm even asking about credit score. Because I ain't about to be dealing Ooh. with nobody in neighbor. I'm Ooh. just being real. I'm not asking for the richest guy, but I'm not asking for somebody where I want to take care of either. Ooh. Because I got to take care of my kids. Ooh. So if you're going to put me in the bind, hell, I can do that by myself. 
Yeah, and you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I don't need no extra stress on top of what I got right. going on. Already. You know, so obviously you need some things to work on already. Um, so I asked to either be we in the same bracket or you a little bit above mm-hmm. me, but mm-hmm. I can't deal with nobody that has no car, no place. Um Hell and no. I, I will hope that that's your car that you just came and pick me up in. I will hope you way uh, Toro this shit, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> we never really know nowadays. Like so, this person Toro, you have to act like you definitely have to act like nowadays. People are rent, renting out these luxury cars mm-hmm. just to put on a facade. When I tell you, I've seen it happen. In Atlanta, it always happens out there. I was just supposed to in Atlanta. They do it. If it's a special weekend or something popping off, they're going to rent out these luxury cars just to be to, to be that, that guy. Mm-mm. The, where your car hit? <laughs> I thought you just had the ways to ask these yeah. things without being blunt and aggressive. But we just let you know what to ask. Yep. Yeah, and those are the questions I'm asking. Off rare. I'm sorry. It's yeah. I'm like, asking those questions. What is your job? What do you do? And do you mm-hmm. have any businesses, businesses establishments? Yep. So you have, that's how you get into the credit score. Mm-hmm. He's hard to me what he own. Mm-hmm. Okay, he got business credit. Mm-hmm. He's a professional. Yep. Type stuff. The next question is how to tell your friends that their boyfriends isn't good for them without hurting their feelings. Be blunt. I'm yeah. sorry. That's the only way you you have to be. You can't sugarcoat it. Because the moment you sugarcoat and continue to sugarcoat, they're never going to get it. But when's a good time to say that? When, you know what I'm saying? Like, like She keep coming to you crying. And yeah. She got she always complaining about something. And you have to like... I mean, you don't have to be blunt as in... You know, you could be a nice nasty. Yeah. Listen, yeah. You got to respect yourself. You got to know your worth. Yeah. And I'm just here to tell you that... He is showing you the red flags. Mm-hmm. I can't force you to leave him, but I can't keep holding your hand either only because it drains me. And your problems start to become our problems. And if you're not going to continue to listen to me and take heed to my advice, then don't ask. I have to let you, you know, journey, yep. figure this out on your own, basically. And so I always tell him that, you know, you're going to do what you're going to do. You're grown. This is just me looking from the outside in. Mm-hmm. And if you continue to complain about the same old dude, I'm going to be straight up with you. I don't want to go tell you what so much now. Yep. But that's me. Yeah. And then once you, if you're not listening, then I'm just. Right. And it's just like. Not necessarily I'm going to stop talking. Because you're going to do what you want to do. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, obviously you're going to do what you want to do. And you're I don't want to sound like a broken about. record. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So. Like a broken record. Right, and you, it's like you have to be blunt. But when you are so in love, like you have nothing to and no, it. yeah, that's the only way you really gonna see. You don't wake up one day and just realize, like, damn, Ooh, this not for me. What? Yeah. What? This not for me. What was I doing? I should have listened. Like, and then that'll be the time I pull myself back up and be that friend again. You Correct. know what I'm saying? Because now I gotta but, help you go through this this new journey that you about to right. go through. Right, and if I done told you twenty one times already. Yeah. And you keep doing a thing 25 times. It's just like. <laughs> you didn't get it without even telling me. Oh, the rest me. of the four times. So if you keep doing. you, I, I just feel like that's any real friend. Yeah. You have to let them go through it at a point in time. You can't always continue to hold their hand. But you mm-hmm. have to be blunt too. Don't sugarcoat it. Because everybody else is going to sugarcoat it around them. They want somebody to sugarcoat it to validate why they should stay. There it is. There it is. Yep. But you have to be blunt and you have to let them know, like, baby, it's not for you. I got the best interest mm-hmm. for you. Let me tell you, I'm not going through your relationship. I don't know what y'all go through. I don't know what you actually like about the nigga, but I'm letting you ass know right now, he don't sound too good for you. I don't think he's good. I think you can yeah. do better. You deserve yeah. better. These are all the key words. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, that you could just say without, you know what I'm saying, being really? so mean, yep. uh, you know. Yep, yep. And it, either way you say it, she's going to think yeah. you're coming off mean. Yeah. Or he's going to think you're coming off mean. Yeah. But the truth hurt. Baby. A true friend. Sixth question. Tips with being a mom, business owner, and GF slash wife. How do you juggle it all? Girl. Father can. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, pray. We all trying to make it, okay? I feel like there is no answer for this. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just feel like what prayer... It comes so natural. Yeah. Because it's just like... You'll figure it out. Something that you have to do. Yep. Like, I have to be a mom. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It come natural. That natural protection, them instincts. Like, you're going to want to be yep. a mom. You're going to you're gonna have to get up and do that job. Yep. And then, if you are already having a business before the kids, or you want to start something up after the kids... It's just going to come naturally. You're going to yeah. hustle because now I got the ground for my baby. Yep. At the same time, so. You'll make that time. You're going to make that time and you just have to keep faith and you have to feed your body like mm-hmm. nutrients. Don't be drinking no Red Bull like me. <laughs> it ain't good for you. But, you know, you have to continue to take care of yourself. I go to the gym. Yeah. And I be tired, but I, I have to put, when I know like I'm dead tired, I literally have to get up and go to the gym because I have to push through it to I make sure my body is stable enough to continue to get up 5 30 in the morning to go to pt because i'm in the military so go to pt and then get the girls up get them ready drop them off where i need to go mm-hmm. and just continue from 5 30 to 5 30 at night yeah you be doing it damn it's a joke it's it's a struggle but it took me a while to get there i'm not gonna lie it took me a while to get there i used to be too drunk where i didn't want to do nothing yeah. especially with postpartum so last year and this year, like, I made a vow to myself. My babies are getting older. And being the fact they are four and they're starting to understand. And mm-hmm. they can do a little. They can use the party on their own now. You know, they can eat. They're asking questions. And they're grasping stuff. This is the time to start and get back on your grind. Yep. So, it's going to come naturally. But my biggest thing is, a tip is, like you said, Lynn, pray and feed your body mm-hmm. the right things. Because if you are always drained and your knees getting weak and buckling and shit... <laughs> Yeah, you're not going to be able to juggle anything. So you got to get up and... you 65. <laughs> Me is giving out back, constantly hurting because you ain't doing nothing. Yep. You got to train those muscles that you're using every day or they're going to get weaker and weaker. But as women, it, like, it just, it's going to come natural. And we all doing the best we can, can do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, we all just out here, but... That first year of motherhood, you're going to pause your life. Like mm-hmm. that that's just something that is going to happen. Yep. So like she said, now she's at the point where she can pick that right back up. Yep. And start getting back on her grind and doing what she loves to do. So yeah. do the pray. It, it's just prayer. And honestly, like as far as like I'm not married, so I don't really know what that looks like. Um and I know, like, it is different when your husband is complaining and then your boyfriend mm-hmm. complaining. But, like, being intimate and those type of things, sad to say, that that that's my last thing I'm thinking about. You yeah. know, it, it's sad to say. Yeah, it's like you, I got so much other yeah. stuff on my bigger fish to fry. Yeah, but it sucks because it's just like your husband was here way before the mm-hmm. kids was here. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, but... I don't know, like that's just something like maybe date night or yeah, um, yeah. it has to be met in the middle. Like your husband just can't be complaining and complaining and complaining because then that can obviously bring your energy down. Down, yeah. You know, he has to understand what you're actually going through, what you've been through, what you're yeah. trying to do now, you yeah. know. So yeah. it has to be like communication and it's going to be some ups and downs, but you know, you'll get through it. And a lot of dudes, and I'm not going to say a lot of dudes because I don't like generalizing the population. But most dudes that I, I've come into contact with or known through other people, they literally just don't get it. Mm-hmm. After having a child and being a mom and trying to juggle a business, how drained your body is. And I may not look like I'm drained. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I feel it on the inside and mentally you can get drained. But I cannot show that. I can't afford to sit there and be depressed and sit in my sadness because I, I have jobs to do. Mm-hmm. Whether it's work being a mom, being a wife, being a girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Like, I have jobs to continue to do. So I can't sit up here and, and show you, like, I just can't do it, man. I can't yeah. do it. Like, you know. Yeah. You have figure to. Figure that shit out. You have to figure it out. And, and I wish more more dudes would be more understanding of that because your body is going, went through a rigorous change after mm-hmm. having, but even four years old, four years later, like, mm-hmm. it's just you still feel drained. You never gave your body proper healing mm-hmm. and you're not going to because you don't have time to so you have to make time to but even your mind your mind is not yeah. my mindset is not the same when i was 25 yeah before i had my first daughter my mind is not even the same at all so i mean i obviously changed and evolved as mm-hmm. a person outside of motherhood. you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. just outside of motherhood so it's a lot 
you know, but I mean, it could be done. It and like, be as women, we're like super women, so we, we, we'll we figure it out in prayer. Like, you got mm -hmm. to pray. Like, that's yep. the only way you can kind of get through anything in life, yeah. you know? Like, just when you think you can't do something, you can. You can. Um, next question. Yeah, that's a good, that was a good question. I we should do a podcast. Up. That's honestly. what one of my clients said, too. You set the mic up. <laughs> you really should. How to end a situation slash relationship with a toxic guy. Baby, this is an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> this is an easy one. Well, block. Block, buy, cuss his ass off, get the fuck on, you know. Uh uh, we're not doing this. I feel like you have to block. You have to delete. Yeah. Because you can't. You have to close all the access, the door, so they can't come back in knocking. Like, like you mm -hmm. said, he's toxic. So toxic people are gonna always find their way back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the little mm -hmm. was crack. You mm -hmm. can't leave no cracks, you baby. You can't leave no crack because as soon as you leave a crack, yep, he, he come. come chugging along. You miss me. Yep. You no. have to close it all, clean your hands, and move forward. Yeah. Do not look back. Like that, if you know it, it to the point where it's so it toxic, your mental. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Like, and it's so e it's easier said yeah. than done. Yeah. I want to say that it is easier said than done because once when you're in love, in mm -hmm. lust, can't nobody tell you nothing, and it's easy to be complacent and get comfortable. Mm -hmm. So honestly. You know, you do have to cut off all access. And yep. it's going to hurt. You're going to miss the person, whatever the case is. But when you got God. <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to me. In your life. <laughs> you can get through it. Don't weep with you. Seriously. No, that's a, that's a, good, that's a good point. But also, <laughs> surround yourself with positive people. people. You know what I'm saying? You can't just be going through something like that and then hanging out with Sarah and Sarah it's going got a toxic... It. Th there it is. There and you're going to be like, well, you know what? Sarah can do it. I can do it too. Now you got mm -hmm. two sad ass people <laughs> trying to overcome some shit. And giving each other advice. <laughs> giving each other advice. And it's just like, well, girl, just shoot him and take your grade. Just cuss his ass. No. That's what I did. And he came right on we back. Not, that's that crack. That's that crack that you just <laughs> left open. And we can't... Cause she might have been that door you needed yep. to shut too. Like yep. you have to keep yourself yep. around positive people, people so to take your mind off of that. And then next you know, a month will go by and then yep. uh, two months. And you like, and Damn. it's just like, okay, I can do it. And then time heals it all. So, yep. you know, yep. it's all I in honestly, time. Mm -hmm, I honestly can agree with that. So one thing about, even with toxic friendships, one thing I had to do was, not that nobody was being toxic to me, but my yeah. crowd, my crowd was, it wasn't aligning with what I had going on. Mm -hmm. And I was listening to a TikTok, of course. Mm -hmm. And she literally said, go through your social media following and followers and remove anything that's not serving you or adding to your plate. And you'll see your feed start to be more inspirational and motivational and inspiring and positive. Wow. And that's exactly what I did. I went through, I swear to God, I don't even lie to say this for the camera. I literally went through my followers and my um my following because you mm -hmm. can remove people now mm -hmm. and you can remove yourself from them but anyway and i did that and when i tell you my news feed, besides the shade room now i got to keep the shade room hey we got to be in the loop i gotta stay in the loop now that's new, that's the new fox news now <laughs> i got to stay the shade room is still there but everything else that was not serving me people that i didn't even interact with on social media i was just following because of follow back and this is people that i had for years on this instagram Mm -hmm. But I unfollowed them. I even unfollowed celebrities that mm -hmm. didn't. I was in the mix of drama. Correct. And I, it's like I'm following you because you're famous. It's not following mm -hmm. because you inspire me. So like, mm, once that's I, a good one. Mm -hmm, once I did that and start following anything that aligned with my lash business, my esthetician school, my friends that got businesses, is so inspirational. Other people in different states, especially Atlanta, because Atlanta is where you go for inspiration. Yep. Swear to God. Yep. And you can come back home and do the damn thing. So I did all that, cleaned up my feet, and that's how I got rid yep. of toxic friendships and start attracting good genuine friendships. Your clients become your friends. And mm -hmm. it's just it just makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. I think that's why I like to keep my personal instagram and my business instagram Separate. some days when i'm like uh i'll get on my business instagram and i follow nothing but fire braiders and it motivates me yeah i get up there by the third part so i'm like let me get my ass it's up like, you know what i'm saying let me get some content mm -hmm. in like it just motivates me so i i, I do love that like mm -hmm. I, I do agree with like your timeline mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying 
Mm, Cause you might not have the luxury mm -hmm. um, to go to a different city yeah. or state to get inspiration. So yeah. because you have it at the tip of your fingertips, make that work for you yeah. to get rid of toxic relationships and toxic friendships. Because even this, like Krishana Blueface, Baby. like even having them on your news feed, and even though she's doing better now, but at a time it was toxic. Mm -hmm. And if that's what you're condoning or that's what you're intaking, it just everything aligns everything yeah. come it, it aligns and it's going to affect you some way or another just your mentality towards the situation mm -hmm. like i would never let that nigga disrespect me i'm gonna cuss his ass out yeah if you never even seen that you never even would have been thinking about it yeah you know what i'm saying you could have seen something how to deal with the situation in a more positive light so i agree it's i feel like that's good for for relationships and friendships to clean up what's around you social media um and, and physically, and if you, you got to cut it off. Second guess or question: Is this toxic? Is this person toxic? Is this relationship? Nine out of ten is toxic. Nine out of ten it is toxic. toxic. And, and then you just gotta you gotta maneuver and and, and, and act accordingly. Yep, yeah, nine out so, of ten is toxic. And it's not gonna be easy. Hell, ain't nothing in life easy. easy. If it was easy, then we'll all be rich and famous, and yeah, we'll all be on the top of the world. Mm -hmm. But. You know, that end goal is it's going to be something to really talk about. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be a real testimony. Mm, so Yeah, it's a part of the journey. Yep. It really is.